So in this video, I'll be going to Criterion A strand 2 of my design e-portfolio report that managed to score me a 7 out of 7 for design. So Criterion B strand 2 talks about presenting a range of feasible design ideas using an appropriate medium and annotation, which can be correctly interpreted by others. So they ask you to sketch a range of three plus clear design ideas. So one thing that people may believe is that the more the better, but that's not necessarily true. If rather than focusing on having more sketches, it's good to just have three sketches, but maintain the quality for each sketch because you also have to consider the page count. There's a 40 page limit. So it's not good to increase the number of sketches that you have because it'll make things more messy. So what I would say is that three is the best, no less, no more. And explain the key features of each idea. It's mainly from the folk, uh, it's mainly about the annotation of each sketch and get feedback for each. This is talking about the survey that you would have to do in order to choose the best sketch among the three. But for me, I did that in strand three because I believed it was more, it showed a more appropriate flow because this is where the chosen design would be presented. So I thought it would be better to place it there. So I'll be talking about this in the next strand when I make that video. So I'll only be presenting up to here for strand two. So this is my first sketch in which I made the first animal that I chose for my 3D ornaments were cranes. So I chose 3D origami cranes, good luck ornament. And so my product consists of many components. First is the 3D origamis, next the digital brochure, and then the toy stand and the poster. So the toy stand and the poster are the same for all sketches. So I included that at the end. The ones that varied between all the sketches for me was the 3D origami crane, the 3D origami um, ornament, as well as the digital brochure. So the brochure is below this, but we can start with the 3D origami ornament. So if we were to look at my, um, my sketch, the first thing that I would say you'll have to include are different angles in order to sort of show off your design. Try to show it from the front, the side, the back, the bottom. Whatever view, uh, whatever, whatever view you can include has importance. Of course, it depends on what product you include, but especially if it's a physical product, it's always good to include more angles if possible. Another thing is it's always better if you can sort of digitally create the product. For me, I physically created it because... I couldn't really think of a way to digitally make it. For me, physically, it was easier. So, but if you're good at using those digitally, digital softwares to create these sort of things, then it's always good to go to uh, the digital side because it makes your product clearer and easier for the examiner to see. Another thing would be, of course, the annotations. Annotations are very important, especially if especially if you're doing it digitally. So you can, of course, there's the option of writing the annotations physically. But for me, I believe that typing it is clearer and way more easier. You can make it bigger, smaller, and you can also bold it. There are many ways you can sort of make the text easier for the examiner to see. Because more so than the actual image itself, the image, you can see it all. But the annotations have to be clear so that everything just makes sense together. So it's best if you can do it digitally. And the, act, and the annotations can also center around the Access FM model in which you generally talk about aesthetics. For example, you talk about, for example, I said that the swan uses a pattern of white and red. So I symbolize what red and white um, symbolize in Japanese culture to justify it. And I also mentioned how it's made. I mentioned the size and I mentioned the material. So, and generally the format and everything, I based it off the Access FM. So I had to mention what was specific to this sketch and how it differs to the other two sketches. So that's the main point of the annotations. And it's good if that can be included. Another thing is I mentioned in the previous video that my product consists of two 3D origami figures. So that's the same here. It's just that the only difference between both of them would be the color scheme. So I sort of mentioned it down here that the solution consists of two 3D origami cranes, but the sketch only depicts one because both are the same. 
When it comes to situations like these, there's no need to draw it out, but you can sort of write a disclaimer down here, which also brings me to the point of color. You may believe that there's no need to include color in the sketches, but it's just as important to include color here as it is in the final sketch. So for me, it's just white and red. So I didn't really include much color, but if your product is color heavy, um, it changes a lot. The view of the product changes a lot depending on whether you color it or not. It is important to color it. Next would be the brochure, the first and the second page. If you were to look at my brochure, you can sort of see that the words itself can't be seen that clearly. So what I try to do is I try to bring the focus to the headlines and the annotations itself. So you can sort of see, get the idea of what I wanted to include in my brochure through just the main headings and the annotations, which include the font size, font style, the color scheme, the different words, the type of information used and everything like that. You can sort of get what I want to do with the brochure because I don't believe that the examiner would actually read everything. I just believe that they just want an idea on what the product is, in which case I believe the annotations are very important. So even if you have to compromise the size of the image itself, you should never compromise on the size of the annotations. For me, that's how important I think they are. And as mentioned before, this is sort of the arrangement of how to make the 3D origami crane. And if we were to go to the QR code, you would be brought to a digital poster that shows how to make each triangular unit, which is depicted here. And how to sort of connect it all together to make a crane by the end. And while I did say that for me, I believe the annotations are most important. I also sort of gave options for the examiners to see the brochure in full size by giving a link to this uh, Canva link to my brochure if the examiner wanted to see it. There's no, there's no need to include anything. You don't want the, there's no need to, sort of included if you don't believe it's important at all. But you should also know that no examiner is required to click any link you include here. That's why teachers would advise you not to include links. I just did it in case because for me, I'm already satisfied with providing these annotations, but this is just an in-case measure I took. I also included the larger photos of the brochure in my appendix for that purpose. And sketch two, what? I did 3D origami dragons, same thing, just different sketches. And you can see the brochure, the design is different, but the color scheme is sort of the same. So that's where my sketches would vary a bit. And the same thing, I provided a link here and sketch three. And one thing I want to mention is that while your art doesn't have to be perfect, it should still be at the level where people can understand what you're writing what you're drawing. And even if it's not that understandable, you should try to improve the understanding through the annotations. For example, this one, it's supposed to be spiny lobsters. But a lot of people have told me that they look like cockroaches. So what I try to do is I try to change that through the annotations so people understand what I'm talking about, even, even if their per initial perception is that they, it doesn't look like lobsters. So that's how important annotations could be. And yeah, different design for the brochure as well. And I linked to the brochure. And if you can see, the type of information I include in the brochure also differs depending on what animal I choose for a 3D ornament. So because of that, I couldn't have possibly done this research in Criterion A which in which I did more general research. So I sort of gave a statement for that down here. I said that all brochures for all sketches have variations in the type of information included as it depends on the type of good luck ornament portrayed. So general research could not be conducted in Criterion A, but had to be done in Criterion B instead. Therefore, you can sort of give a statement like this if your product is a bit similar to mine. And this is my designed for a toy stand, which is general for all sketches. So I included it at the end, just sort of the colors, the design, and how it's related to Japanese values and culture. And this is also the poster design as well. 
Similar to the brochures, I also included a link to the poster design, as well as a big photo in the appendix for clearer viewing. But you can see ev even if the poster itself can't be seen, the annotations are big and clear. And down here, I included some general specifications, which apply to all sketches. As I mentioned before, I've based off of all my annotations on the Access FM, but since some of them, some parts of the Access FM will be the same for all sketches, I just compressed it all here for some of them, which are materials, functions, size, customer, and cost. The size of the ornament itself will be different, which I specified in the sketches, but some types of some dimensions would all be the same. So I included that here. And that would be all for strand two, criterion B strand two. So yeah, there's no need to include it here. For me, what I believed was that the flow would be better in strand three, but generally criterion the criteria for strand two is fulfilled. So you would be able to score for a seven for criterion B strand two.